Hey friends, Dylan Bates here, the Final Cut Bro. Johnny Harris is an absolute legend when it comes to map making. Today we are going to try and take some of that sweet legendary sauce and make our own maps. But I also have a super cool plugin to share with you from my friends at Motion VFX and it will take your excellent map making ventures and make them happen in a fraction of the time. Let's get started. Go ahead and open up Motion. If you don't get the project browser, you can push Command Option N and that will give you the project browser. Next, you'll just want to select the Motion project and then we can set the duration of our clip to something like 20 seconds. Set your frame rate to whatever you desire. For this tutorial, I'm going to do 59.94 and we will push Open. The first thing we're obviously going to want to do is bring in a map so you can do that with command I and then we will just locate our map that we want to do. So I found this amazing 12k map off of I believe DeviantArt. I'm going to have a link in the description to this if you want to download it for yourself. It was free and I'm just going to import that. So this map is at a 12k resolution which is really important because when you're going to be zooming in you don't want it to look pixely. 4k, 8k, those would work for a 1080 timeline, but I got 12K because I want my computer to suffer. The first thing that I want to show you is how to do some really basic camera zooms. And I'm going to show you the easiest method for applying these animations so you don't have to have any understanding of animation. So what we're actually going to do is rather than put in a camera, first thing we're going to do is add a rectangle. And we'll just create a rectangle. Then you can go into your inspector, go to your geometry, and I'm actually going to set the size of this to be 1920 by 1080. So that's going to fill up the entire frame, but that is okay. We're going to fix that in just a second. Then from there, go to your style, go ahead and disable the outline. So it's an actual 1920 by 1080. And now let's go ahead and scale this down to something like 25%. I'm going to rename this as our camera animator. And then I want to actually turn it red so I can easily see where it's going to be. Jump into your properties and we can just lower the opacity so that it's just barely visible. And this is going to be a visual indication of where your camera is going to go. After that, we're going to jump on up, add an object, and we are going to add a camera. And then from there, we're going to switch the entire thing to 3D. In the camera, we can go up to our behaviors, go down to camera, and we're going to choose framing. And framing is really nice for creating dynamic camera animations very quickly. Once we have that, go ahead, drag your camera animator into this well here. And what you'll see is if I play through this, you can see the camera zooms in to totally fill up the frame with this red box, which is exactly what we want but it's not very smooth. So we're going to change around some settings to get it really smooth looking. The first thing we want to do is the position transition time. We'll drag that up to a full 100. And I'm actually going to set this down to two seconds so we can really see it happening. So if we play back, you can see that it's doing the zoom and it's going to be a little bit choppy because I'm working with a 12K texture. We also want to change the transition type from constant and we're actually going to do ease both. So now it's going to start out with an ease curve, slowly zoom in and then go to the end. But you'll see it's got this weird animation where it kind of shifts off to the side and then zooms in. So we can fix that by going to the orientation and set it to orient to final. Now I don't know why this isn't the default because this fixes a lot of issues when you set it to orient to final. But now you can see we've got this nice smooth animation in to this red box. What's really great is anywhere that we move this camera animator, the camera is going to zoom in on. So that's a really easy dynamic way to get your camera to zoom in exactly where you want it. And you can disable the visibility of this clip. And so now when it zooms in, you won't even see it and you can just have some really great smooth animations. So I'm going to move this over the top of the Caribbean for today or Caribbean or however you want to say it. According to Jack Sparrow, it is the Caribbean. So we're going to go with that today. So from there, let's go ahead and get rid of these black lines here. We'll just scale this up to, I think 28% fills out the whole frame. Now let's say that we want to add Add in another animation where the camera moves to a different location on the map. Well, that's again super easy. We're going to go up to our framing and we can push command D to duplicate it. So all of our settings are identical. We can move it later into the scene here. And then let's go ahead. We'll go to the end of our framing here. We'll go to our camera animator. We'll add a keyframe, move forward a frame and then move it down to where we want the camera to 
end up. So we can just move this down. I'm gonna go down to Chile here. There we go, looking very lovely. So now we've got this really dynamic animation zooming in here and then it goes down to Chile. So the next thing we're gonna do for this map is add in some fancy text and that's just gonna outline our locations. So first we're gonna zoom in here to the Caribbean and I'm gonna click and add the text tool. I'll type in Caribbean and then we can just push escape and that will finish that off. Now you'll notice that it's totally vanished. So to fix that, we'll go down here to our position tab and you'll find the Z setting. It's at negative 1706. So what it's basically doing is it is behind our map here. So to fix that, click this down arrow and push reset parameter and now it should be on the top. So now you can see as the camera moves around, the Caribbean text is there. And we could actually even move it a little bit earlier here and I can select that push O and that will extend it out to the end. So now our camera zooms in and it has the Caribbean, but it's not really very 3D yet. So if we just change our Z position here, we'll go vertically a little bit, like say 106 pixels, that seems good. It's got a little bit of three dimensions to it, or we can move it way forward in 3D space and we could adjust the scale on it, shrink it down to what we want. And it's looking blurry, I'll show you how to fix that in just a second. But now the, the Caribbean text is gonna be much more 3D on our zoom. So it's gonna add a lot of depth to our map. So to get it to be not blurry, go ahead and change your quality over to best and now we can see the text perfectly clear. So from there, let's go ahead and add in some more text down here at the bottom for Chile. So I'm gonna duplicate our Caribbean text, but it's kind of annoying to have to move back and forth in our map to find our text layers. So if you wanna change that, we could actually click on this button here and give us two windows to work with. Then we can change the camera type over here in the top left hand corner of each of these windows. So I'm gonna set this to the front and that should give us a broad view of our entire project here so we can just get a good idea of what we're looking at. I'm going to select our Caribbean copy here and then I'm going to drag it down to where I want next to Chile. And there we go, we've got that all lined up. I can just type in Chile here and escape. So now we've got our text and we can move it exactly how we want it. So now let's say that we want to have an arrow that goes from the Caribbean down to Chile. So to do that, we'll select our pen tool here. We'll just click and I recommend doing it in the zoomed out form here so you can see where you're clicking to. And then let's say we want to go right here to Chile. So we can do that, create our nice fancy little arrow and we can actually drag this out to get more of an arc with it. Then we're just gonna push enter and that will finish off our shape here, but we want to disable the fill so it cleans it up a bit and we wanna bring our width way, 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 way down. And then we'll go down here to the end cap and we'll set that to arrow. Also, sometimes I like to set the start cap as bevel. I just find that looks a little bit cleaner. So now when we zoom in, you can see we have our Bezier curve here. And then as it moves down, there is that arrow. Let's go ahead and move the arrow to our final position that we like. So we'll just have it set right there. And then let's say we want the animation to happen as the camera is going. So we'll just find our last point offset here. Click this down arrow, add a parameter behavior, and we are gonna use the parameter behavior of ramp. Ramp is just a really great way to get a nice smooth animation. So we'll find our curvature slider here, set that to a full 100, and then we'll come up here to the start value and we will set that to negative 100%. So now it's starting from nothing. So you can see the ramp is happening very slowly over this animation. So let's fix this by setting an in point here. We'll push I, that will start the in point there. And then come to the end of our framing copy here and we'll push O and that will create a nice dynamic little animation for our arrow pointing down to Chile. And you'll notice that it's got this weird blip here. So we can fix that by selecting our Bezier curve and we'll just push I and that will trim it down to size so that it doesn't have that weird blip anymore. Now we could dial in the color of this. We could set it to like a yellow color or something or even red to show danger. We could go to our properties and we could set the blend mode to something like overlay. So now it's just over the top of the map, almost like it's drawn on there. And now let's say that we want when that gets here, um, a lot of the time I'll see 
Johnny Harris, you know, kind of create these circles that show tension or war or something like that to highlight a point on the map. So to do that, let's go ahead, select our circle tool here, and we'll just create a circle generally about the size that you want it. Somewhere in there is great. And once again, this circle is in 3D space, so it's down below everything. So we'll just reset the position on that. And then we can select our tool. We could drag it over here. The scale is way too big. So we'll jump into our geometry and drag that down to the size that we want. And also, I think this has an outline. So there we go. We'll just dial that into the location that we want. So we'll set that to 45, just so it's nice and clean. Let's go ahead, change it to be red to imply danger. And then we can go over to our properties and we're gonna animate the scale here. So we'll click this down arrow, add a parameter behavior. We'll select ramp once again. We'll just move forward about a second. We'll push O so that it trims our ramp down to one second. And then we can drag our curvature way up and set our start value to negative 100% so that it's starting from zero. And as you can see, it plays out and just slowly grows over that section. Now we can go back to our properties and set this to overlay. And so now we have this gorgeous looking red uh, circle over chili. And let's say we wanna have two of these. We could just do command D, drag it a little later into the frame. And then we could drag this one up say to this area and we'll have another red circle. And we could even adjust the scale here to be 100 so it's a lot bigger just like that. So one last thing that I wanna show you is you could actually have your text animate in. We're just gonna select our Caribbean here and we'll go to our text behaviors and we could do text basic and let's just do fade characters in. So now it's almost going to write those words in Caribbean just like so. We move down and here's Chili. We could have Chili also animate in. Let's see if we find a point right here. Maybe we want it to start going in. So we'll push I for in. And then we could go to our behaviors, text basic, and we could do fade characters left in again. So now it'll kind of write in Chili. And we got our growing animations there. So if that seemed like way too much work to build in Motion yourself, well, I have got good news for you. Motion VFX has got you covered. So I'm gonna actually show you from their M Travel 2 pack, this really cool travel map animation they've got built. And I'm gonna show you how to use it. And we're gonna try and recreate the effect we just made in Motion, but in a matter of seconds. So I'm gonna drag in their travel map from their titles. And we've got our departures over to our arrivals. So what we can do is go up here to the settings and we're gonna change this to set location. So you've got the pink dot and you got the blue dot. We're gonna drag the pink dot over here to the Caribbean and the blue dot down here to Chile. And then from there, we can just go back to the final effect and we've already got an animation going from the Caribbean down to Chile, just like that. We could also dial in the text so we can have this say Caribbean if we wanted to or whatever you wanted to say. And then we could go down here, go to our arrival location and change it over to Chile. So you can do that. You can also change the font, whatever you want to do. But you can also dial in a thousand other settings. I don't know if it's actually a thousand, but it feels like a thousand. So you've got your camera zoom that you can dial in here. You've got your rotation if you want to go crazy. Um, you have got your C color. If we want to change the C color, we can make it black the Black Sea. Uh, you could get rid of the opacity altogether so you could drop in a nice looking background if you wanted to. You can change your line width. And if we wanted this to look a little closer to what we made in motion, we could actually change this airplane. So if we wanted to get rid of this airplane, we could actually change it over here to an arrow so it'll look kind of similar to what we made in motion. But you can just see how the camera is really nice and smooth and fluid, looks really nice and clean. And there are so many settings here if you can't get what you want it to look like, I would be very surprised. So if you're gonna be making a lot of maps, strongly suggest this plugin pack. There's also all of these other options with backgrounds. There's other animated maps just like this with routes and city roads and memories and then all these icons. It's really an exhaustive pack, really incredible. So if you're gonna be making maps, pick this one up, link in the description. If you wanna see a video that's just like this but we're animating like Vox, check out this video. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.